Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to yet another episode of the Gloving Paradigm. I am your host Peter aka LPD8 Dubuque and this week is going to be a very interesting week because I got another Archetypes of Gloving episode that I want to drop on you guys and this week is going to be about conjuring because the last time I did it it was about impacting and that's what you guys voted on to do first was impacting. So now I'm going to be covering conjuring and Oh boy, was this style one of those styles that I actually personally like seeing every now and then because just as much as impacting gives you a breath of fresh air, so does conjuring. And the main reason is is because conjuring has its own set of quirks and dynamics that make it such a unique archetype in itself and also being known as an umbrella archetype, which I'll definitely get into in a little bit. But there's just so much that this style really offers to the community that not so many other ones can. Like, yes, impacting has its own set by offering what are you know what conjuring kind of pretty much offers. But there's a different dynamic when it comes to impacting and conjuring itself. So let's just get into this episode real quick and just get things going here. So the first thing. That most people are probably going to be asking me is what is conjuring and i can understand why people will be asking me conjuring because some of our lingo is kind of convoluted but conjuring in of itself first thing i want to cover is the umbrella term because i know a lot of people are wondering why is it an umbrella term first thing is is that as an umbrella term conjuring means any form of manual light manipulation now that also includes impacting to an extent, it includes itself, as well as including things like phasing, which is something I like to do. Teleporting does not fall under this category due to the fact that they are not manually manipulating the light itself. They are using a feature known as the accelerometer to manipulate the light features itself within itself, if that makes any sense. Basically, it is an automation modular effect. It is not something that you are manually controlling yourself. You are literally letting the feature do it for you by manipulating the parameters of that feature. So, for that example, with teleporting, you have literally the idle mode be a no mode where it's just completely blank. It has no lights going on. But as soon as you move your hands on the low setting, all of a sudden the lights turn on. That's teleporting. Okay, that is not conjuring in my opinion because you are not physically doing it by yourself in terms of you clicking the lights on and off type deal. On like impacting, conjuring, and phasing itself, those you manually have to do yourself. That's why I don't count teleporting in this whole in this whole archetype umbrella term just because you're not manually doing it yourself. Okay, I just want to kind of just want to stress that real quick. So with that out of the way, what is conjuring in and of itself? Well, it is a style that it utilizes deception and misdirection to actually create illusions and certain effects that, you know, not a lot of other styles can actually pull off. You know, I, I can certainly say yes, impacting can pull off pretty much everything that conjuring can, but there's just a different dynamic when it comes to impacting. That's the whole contrast of colors, if you guys actually remember from my previous episode on the Archetypes of Gloving. If you haven't listened to that one, I highly suggest checking it out. It goes into impacting a much more in-depth analysis, but back to where we were. So the main focus of being in Conjuring is that you have to be extremely precise on all of your sequencing with your lights and helping you pretty much create the illusions that you're trying to achieve. Now. One of the major things that I like about Conjuring is that, you know, a lot of people will do it in the very, very beginning and I can totally understand once you actually get done and then you just turn on all your lights and just go into a regular glove show. However, there are a few people who are able to actually carry the Conjuring format throughout the entire show and that's something I've always thoroughly enjoyed when I see somebody do that because it shows how much of an understanding they have about their lights and how to actually operate them. So that's the main focus about conjuring is literally deception and misdirection. If those words kind of sound familiar to you, they should because that's something that happens a lot in magic tricks. You know, it's all about misdirection and deception and pretty much using, you know, sleight of hand and all this other stuff to actually help, you know, perform the show that you're trying to perform, whether it be magic or in this case with conjuring gloving, you know. So that's pretty much the idea is that you're literally manipulating the lights manually to create these effects and illusions such as like 
making a light appear like it's jumping from one hand to the other or it's jumping through your head or you're putting it in your mouth and you pull it out with the other hand like there's many many different things you can do in terms of conjuring tricks that it's really really hard for me to actually sit here and try to devolve all of the tricks that you guys can do because there's just so many i have video examples i will try to make sure i have the link to them on there unfortunately i really wish that when it comes to these videos that they were all on youtube because it just makes it a hell of a lot easier because not everybody's on all the gloving groups that are on facebook or any of the other visual uh social media websites so if you're unable to watch some of the videos that I've linked into this episode's description, I do apologize for that, but that is literally the only place I can actually find them when they're posted on there because not everybody posts on YouTube, and that's kind of a shame in my opinion because that way it makes it easier for me to share people's videos. Just just kind of putting that out there, you know? So, <laughs> you know, it, it, there's, there's a lot to just go into when it comes to conjuring, and the first thing I definitely want to cover is pretty much the lights itself. Now, when it comes to glove lights and conjuring, you can pretty much use any light to do conjuring. I will certainly say that there's two branches or two variants of conjuring. There is the single mode, which is pretty much your on and off, which is the standard of conjuring in my opinion. And then there's one that people call multi-mode. I will call it poly mode just because it sounds cooler in my opinion, but that's just me with names. You know, it. When, when it comes to multi-mode, it's literally just using the multiple modes that lights have to your effect. Now, I will certainly say multi-mode or poly-mode is a little bit more difficult because you actually have to really, really understand your lights in terms of timing and precision. You know, with most programmable lights or programmer lights, as I like to call them, is that you need to understand how long you have to hold the light down to turn it back off. And then not only that, is also being very precise without making it very noticeable that you're changing the lights to your viewer. So definitely wanted to kind of put that out there that there are two variants, but most people like doing one mode. It's very simple. It keeps everything very precise and simple for the person who's actually performing. Not only that, it makes it a little bit easier for the viewer to understand what's going on, okay? So when it comes to non-programmer lights, it's literally really easy. Just get a one mode on off thing. It makes it very simple. You can go with the multi-mode ones. You know, I've seen people do it with iNovas as well. I can certainly tell you when I talked about it in my impacting episode that I had a friend who did what I, <laughs> the best way I can describe it is impact conjuring. And the main reason is because he was using eight lights instead of 10. There's a reason for that. To actually manipulate the lights in a way that I felt like it was a conjuring show because he was doing it with all of his fingers, but with the iNovas, it just made it feel like this impact style conjuring. I, I don't really know how else to really explain it, but that, you know, he, he had it in a way that he knew, he understand his sequencing and he had a routine when it came to his sequencing, not to his show itself, just the sequencing. Just want to stress that, that, you know, he was able to turn one light off and turn the other one on and it would all be on the, the high modes or the first mode or the solid mode, what, you know, ribbon mode, whatever mode you want to call that when it comes to the iNovas. You know, and then he was able to get, you know, start doing the sequencing where he came to the second mode. You know, basically it got to the point where he would have all of them on the first mode and then he was sequencing all of them into the second mode and then sequencing them all again into the third mode. You know, it, <laughs> it was really, really crazy. I don't really know how else to describe it. It's really hard. You have to see it to understand what I'm talking about. But, you know, that's, that's just pretty much how it is. You know, now when it comes to programmer lights it's it's really simple you just choose any of the lights that have a one mode conjure features a lot of people will call them you know uh, some companies actually refer to that mode as a conjuring mode because they understand that there is that style so they keep that in consideration when it comes to the people of that style which i highly appreciate because there are multiple styles in gloving and that's what we need is to have the variety so people can actually utilize different styles to their needs. Okay, so, you know, there's no special, special light out there that are perfect for conjuring. I would probably say maybe the E-Light Pro if you actually got your hands on those. If you don't know what those are, I definitely recommend actually looking up the, the tutorial that's on YouTube from the Amazing Lights. It's a bulb chip just to give you guys out there, but it is a programmable bulb chip. What you're programming is actually the flashing patterns instead of, you know, the colors and then the flashing pattern. It's just simply the flashing patterns, you know. So, 
Just want to stress that out there. <laughs> you know, there, but there is no special specific light just for conjuring. Now, would that change? Maybe, it all depends on the companies. They're the ones who make the lights. So let's move on to the technique of conjuring. Now, when it comes to the technique of conjuring is depending on how you configure your lights. Now with most conjurers, and I mean most conjurers, there are a few exceptions. Most of them do the infra archetype, which if you don't understand what that is, when it comes to light configuration, I would recommend checking out my Archetypes of Gloving 102 episode. But just to summarize, it's basically all the lights are on the bottoms of the fingers. That's the best way I can describe it for you guys. I just call it the infra archetype because that's what infra means, it's under. So the reason why most conjurers actually do this when it comes to their configuration is that one, it makes it a lot easier for them to change their lights and turn them on and off. Two, when you have all the lights under your fingers instead of on top, it makes it a lot easier to hide those lights. Now, this is where I find it actually absolute key when it comes to that conjuring archetype is having them all under because as a archetype whose main dynamic is deception and misdirection, you want to be able to hide your lights very easily. And that's what I love about having them all under, is that you can hide them very, very easily, therefore making it a lot easier for you to change them as well, and being able to pull off the illusionary misdirection, sleight of hand effects that you can do with lights. Now, there are some people who do the ulti archetype, which is all above. I would certainly say that is a much more challenging thing because even with me as a phaser, having them up on top, except for my pinkies, which I'm not gonna get into, it does make it a little bit more difficult to try to change it without making it so obvious to the viewer. But some people like that challenge. So if you wanna have a more challenging time, you know, conquering, conjuring, then go ahead and have them all above. I would just recommend actually having them all below because it just, it fits more naturally with the conjuring archetype. I know some people will disagree with me on that, but I really do feel that the infra archetype is much more naturally fitting for conjuring because it makes it easier for you to hide your lights, it makes it a hell of a lot easier for you to change your lights, and it just adds more to the effect of what conjuring is. So that's the typical thing people can do is having them all under, but that's just your own personal preference, really, you know? So, you know, make your decision on that and, you know, work with that. If that's not working with you, then try the other styles. You know, that's that's how it is. And I mean light configuration, it's not gloving style, just want to stress that. So now when it comes to the actual technique of like sequencing your lights, my recommendation is definitely do your, you know, do your homework and study on magic tricks because that's what Conjuring wants to use to help facilitate their show. You know, it's all about making the light appear and then making it disappear or, you know, waving your hand in front of it and making you know, the light turn off, you know, type deal. Magic tricks is where you want to look at when it comes to that stuff. And I'm not saying that you have to learn all the illusions and all the the escape artist stuff. I just mean, you know, things that involve sleight of hand, misdirection, and deception are the three main ones you want to look at just because that really helps with the style. Okay. Not only that is understanding showmanship is really going to help fortify the style. Now, every style can have showmanship, but when it comes to conjuring, in my opinion, showmanship is one of the big defining features of the style. And it's because just like magic tricks, you got to have that level of confidence and suave when it comes to your, your movements and your, your tricks. Just like, you know, with magic tricks, conjuring has to have the same thing. And you definitely have this level of showmanship that you do have to have to really, really, really pull it off. Now, I can't sit here and delve super far deep into showmanship as a as an archetype. I kind of did cover that when you check out my my. So on Archetypes of Gloving 101, which is about the pillars and showmanship is one of those pillars. Definitely recommend checking out that episode so if you can get a little bit more in-depth analysis on that. So with that being said, when you're using that skill, it will help you utilize it with the deception and misdirection with things like sleight of hand. Precision on your techniques when it comes to your sequencing is absolute paramount, okay? The main reason is, is because you don't want to have these situations where you're turning off a light and you're not getting your lights turning on at the same time to really sell the effect of it jumping, okay? Like jumping to another light. That's one of the big things that Conjuring has for itself 
is that it make you can if you do it just right you can really make it look like it's literally jumping across from one hand to another you know and when it comes to other things like having one light and you throw it and it's supposed to turn on four other lights or three other lights or multiple other lights then you know understanding how you're going to able to achieve that is going to be really 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 good for you now i will certainly say that some people <laughs> such as myself do not have as thick hands to be able to pull off this you know cupping your hands together or cupping your fingers onto your hands and being able to turn on all your lights all at once i can certainly say i can't do that just because my hands aren't as thick so i can actually do that i will certainly say i've tried doing that in the past and it's never worked out for me i've tried recently and it still doesn't work out for me so with people with thicker hands i guess is the way i'm going to say it you're lucky because it's easy for you to do it <laughs> So I will certainly say when it comes to some people, when it comes to conjuring, that you might have that difficulty. So you might have to figure out another way. But again, that's all that whole trial and error thing that I've repeated multiple times throughout multiple episodes when it comes to practicing. So knowing that there are many, many notable glovers out there that are really, really proficient in the conjuring archetype. There are what I would consider the greatest examples of people who do the conjuring archetype. Now, if you haven't already guessed who's going to be my first one on the list, it's kind of sad because he's he's a conjurer who won the first IGC as a conjurer. Okay, like that that's that's something that I feel like people kind of tend to forget is that this person won the first IGC as a conjurer. You know, like it's it's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely insane in my opinion, but it's great. And that's, that person is Munch. If you, if you didn't catch on to that yet, it's Munch. Look up PM Munch. He's one of the greatest conjurers out there. He's one who really popularized the archetype in itself. And of course, there are other people that I checked throughout Glover's Lounge that had recommendations to other people who are really good at the conjuring archetype. The main reason why I always default to the Glover's Lounge is just because it's the biggest group. It has 26, 26,000 members? 26 plus? You guys know what I'm talking about. It's th it's literally the biggest group on Facebook when it comes to gloving. So I usually default to that just because there's so many people. So there's always a lot of people talking and asking questions. So that's where I usually go to when I do my research. There is another Glover that people have recommended named Merlin. So I haven't really seen any of his stuff and I haven't had a chance to actually look at it. But a lot of people recommended him. Uh, there's another person who goes by the Glover names Humble. I haven't checked their stuff out yet, unfortunately, just because it's been a little bit busy for me. But that's somebody who a lot of people are recommending. Uh, if I say your name and I butcher it, I am I apologize. Like I've said multiple times, I'm horrible with names. I'm good with faces, but absolutely terrible with names. But one person that you can check out in the lounge that a lot of people were recommending was a person named Kyle Dips Westendorf. Again, if I butcher your name, I'm sorry. Uh, there's another one named Bradley Akana. Again, if I butcher your name, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, those people that are highly recommended, I uh, will certainly say that there was one video that got shared by uh, Andrew Trump, I want to say January 10th of 2019. Uh, he shared a video from somebody who goes by the Glover name Scrappy, which is S-K-R-A-P hyphen E. I will certainly say that this video that Andrew Trump shared was probably the quintessential example that I would show somebody the conjuring archetype and the main reason is is because this person showed a very strong understanding of the fundamentals of gloving gloving styles or gloving concepts altogether like clusters dials digits tutting whips flails all that stuff he showed all that stuff and understanding that he had a very strong sense of the fundamentals the thing that I love about this video so much though, is that he's showing you that he knows all the fundamentals, but is completely, completely changed by the dynamic of just simply adding a light sequence of, you know, night light manipulation. Okay. This, vi oh my gosh, this guy was so good. Okay. The main reason why I love this video so much is because he literally shows conjuring throughout the entire show. You know, it's not this whole doing conjuring in the very, very beginning, turning on the lights and then just doing a regular show. He literally would, you know, go from one lights to two lights to three lights, you know, changing three lights to changing three lights. Like, you know, we're saying like these groups and clusters of lights turning on and off. Like, holy crap, it was fantastic. 
And I love it. I absolutely loved it. And I loved it how he would have one light and then he would throw it over to the other hand and he would turn on four lights at once and, you know, do this whole little cluster thing. Like it was, it's just so brilliantly done. And I know I'm gushing over this video, but seriously, this is the video that I would always showcase to people when it comes to trying to show people what Conjuring is able to do. Okay. So, <laughs> I know it's crazy, but that's one of those videos that I, I will be sharing just because it's that good. Okay, it's literally to me the quintessential example of what Conjuring is capable of doing. Now there are one, there's one group, and I had to really dig for this group because I didn't know if it even existed, but I was able to find it. There is a Conjuring group called the Conjuring Lounge. A lot of people have been suggesting the Impact Asylum, but that's for impacting yes conjurers are on there as well however that's i feel like the impact asylum is just more tailored to the style of impacting rather than conjuring so if you're looking forward to actually getting more into conjuring i would recommend actually going to the conjuring lounge if i remember correctly when i looked into it it said it was an open group so you have an opportunity to get in there now there's also another page group i'm not entirely sure i want to say it's a page that's called something out of nothing and that's usually a page that focuses on a lot of conjuring archetype glovers i would definitely recommend checking out that page if you want to you know see a lot more examples of conjuring so those are the two groups well one group plus one page and those are the notable glovers that a lot of people have been recommending again i definitely recommend watching the scrappy video that i'm going to be sharing just because it's again literally the quintessential example of conjuring in my opinion because it's absolutely beautiful and the mastery that this person was able to display of understanding how to sequence his lights and do it with the precision that you need to have to make conjuring look so good oh okay enough gushing over that but yes that is pretty much my episode i really really hope that i was able to cover as much as i can about conjuring in its entirety what you need to know about conjuring the techniques that are required to really pull it off the suggestions that I tried to give you guys to help you facilitate I hope that's actually enough for you guys to actually really get your, you know your your toes wet and I really do hope <laughs> I really do hope that I did this this style justice because it's one of those styles that I thoroughly enjoy always watching especially when it's something that isn't you know one of those things that a lot of people fall into this pitfall and I don't I don't understand why I see a lot of new people do this and I really 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 wish that they would focus on not doing this so i've seen plenty of conjuring you know videos of people who are trying out conjuring where they're doing the conjuring stuff and it looks all really, really good and then they stop and just start turning on all their lights and then start just gloving like ugh, ugh. <laughs> okay that that pulls me away that that takes me out of the immersion of the show and it just, it really kind of falls flat on his face. Now I can understand, you know, from my own experience that you can't just sit there and, you know, if you can't close your hand and turn on your lights all at the same time, don't worry about that. That is not a problem. A lot of people can't do that. I can't do that for crying out loud. So if you think that I'm trying to be, you know, feel like I'm belittling you because you can't do it, don't worry. I can't do it either. So <laughs> don't worry about that at all. <laughs> you know, but... I will certainly say if you're one of those people that can't do that, just simply just putting your hands in a circle as you slowly turn on all your lights at the same time, that's perfectly acceptable. It doesn't really pull me away. All of a sudden more lights are turning on and all of a sudden there's a bunch of lights in my face. I, I've not been detracted from the ship. Okay, so if you're trying out conjuring, please do not just stop and just start turning on all your lights and then go back into the show. It, it really just kills the show for me. And I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. So. That's my one major pitfall that I want a lot of people to avoid is just stopping mid-show, turning on all your lights, and then going right back into it. It just it kills the show. You figure out what works for you to keep the show going while turning on all your lights at the same time. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do it like how Vision Quest does it, but I'm just saying that if you can do that, then it's going to fortify your style altogether. So... But that's pretty much all for my episode. I do highly appreciate everybody who's been listening in on the show. I do highly appreciate everybody who's been liking the page so far. I did get a few more likes. I'm very, very happy. Uh, last time I checked, I was at 136. So, you know, we're 
getting ever so closer to that next 200 so we can get the next you know ask me anything q a thing going on you know y you guys know what i'm talking about pretty much <laughs> So that's pretty much all for my episode. Once again, thank you everybody who has been showing support to the show. It is very, very humbling for me to see that people are still listening in and taking my advice into consideration as a way to approach gloving in different ways. So thank you everybody. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. But that is pretty much all for the episode for this week. So I am your host, Peter, aka LPD8 Dubuque, and I'll see you guys all next week.